up? We are back once again, and you are listening to the Two Do Men podcast. As always, it's Skaggs and the Captain. No guests this week, but we got a couple of upcoming things we want to talk about. And Skaggs, let's tell the Doom Nation what we're talking about this week. Yeah, the two delayed men. It, it actually, yeah. that delay that you were talking about before is a little bit worse than I thought it would be. Yeah. But uh, so if you're watching the video, just bear with us here at technology as usual. So, uh, you know, we'll, figure, we'll start off with a couple of housekeeping items uh, next week. Uh, so Sunday, we are going to be reviewing uh, House of the Dragon, which is the new HBO show, Game of Thrones uh, show about uh, House Targaryen. Shane is going to be joining us for that. See how it goes. We're going to try and review every episode of that, but we're not sure if we will get to because we're going to be pretty busy mm-hmm. the next couple of weeks. Uh, and next week, we're going to, after House of Dragon, we're actually going to take a break for a week um, just because we got a, both got a lot going on. Uh, that would be a good week to watch our recent appearance on the Unfit Statesman podcast, which we recorded last Friday and is out this, this week. Uh, you could check out the Unfit Statesman at linktree.com slash Unfit Statesman. It was a pretty dope conversation, kind of touched a little bit of everything. Got a little that bit was a like, yeah. great conversation, man. It was one of the, the few podcasts that I listen back to that I'm on. I hate listening to myself and listening back to an episode that we did, but I listened back to it because I thought it was actually really good. So it was yeah. really interesting uh, theory we talked about. I think that's what he called it, or ideology he called yeah, it. We got, we got deep, and it was it was stimulating. <laughs> it was. It was. We, so, we almost came up with, like, a mathematical equation to, like, weed out propaganda. You know what I mean? No way, yeah. It was, it was interesting. Zach is really a uh, really smart guy. He's a bit on the spectrum. But he's <laughs> yeah. he's pretty, pretty smart at the same time. So shout out to uh, the Unfit Statesman. Uh, we'll be back on the week of the 28th. We'll, we'll probably be back with another episode early in that week. Uh, either just me and Cap, or perhaps we'll have a guest. We will see. And then after that, we are going to Nashville uh, for a bachelor party. We'll be there for the entire weekend. We are planning to bring all the shit with us mm-hmm. and doing an episode on a rooftop out there. So that will be fun. I will warn everyone, however, that that is up in the air. If you've ever gone on a bachelor party before, yep. especially with our group of friends, I mean, I just went on a bachelor party and there was a detailed itinerary for like every moment of every day and we didn't follow any of it. So yeah. the plan is to record on Friday night out in Nashville, but we'll see what happens. I know we have a we have that and- bike bar scheduled, you know, that yeah. afternoon before downtown <laughs> yeah. Nashville. They have these bicycle bars. You all pedal and you drink on. So who knows by Friday they, night? What's the deal? They drop you off at the Moonshine Distillery. And right. On, so. And I think on Saturday, we'll be setting up a lake day. So, uh, yeah, going to be a we'll bit see. busy. Um, that is definitely going to not be a wildly political episode. And it's probably not going to be a family friendly episode. So warning alert, not a family friendly episode. So, yeah, that's the next uh, two to three weeks in Doom Nation. Mm-hmm. Uh, I thought tonight we'd maybe mix it up a little bit, being that's just me and the cap, and we don't have to worry about a guest. And uh, we'll kind of let tweets of the week perhaps drive the conversation. We got a couple yes. of obvious topics that we're going to touch on, of course, Liz Cheney. Maybe I'll leave the rest uh, up to a surprise. So let's start with my first uh, tweet of the week here this week. And just give me one second to get this all ready. People who don't make it to the end of our episodes, we have this really fun segment at the end of most of our episodes. So I hope you guys enjoy this if it's the first time yeah. you're hearing tweets this is of our, the week. our most fun part of the podcast because we get to like find crazy shit that people post and then talk about and laugh. And here's the first one. And this one is from Q D. The only sweet, creamy goodness I want in my mouth is coochie. I mean, this is one of the more creative funny tweets yep. i'm going to zoom out here sorry for you for those who are listening and not watching but this is our good friend so, quincy <laughs> so i've been seeing this and for the people who are listening for a little bit of context uh people have been combining emojis into these wild positions so they have the woman emoji with her hands over her head turned upside down and then it's a brown heart shape behind it. So it looks like her ass. And then there's two feet that look like her feet are up in the air. And then it's the man emoji with his hands down. So he kind of looks like he's spreading the booty. And then uh, Quincy put his face over that with a cigar. And he looks like he's about to go munch down on some coochie. <laughs> yeah, going chocolate diving. So I thought that was hysterical. Uh, that one gave me a hell of a laugh. So I thought it was... Uh... Definitely worth a tweet. Maybe we get Quincy uh, back on soon. Yeah, I'm always down, man. Anytime Quincy wants to join. So let's let's go over one of yours, Cap. 
Yep. See what we got working. I'm all over the place this week, I believe. When are you not all over the place? Yep. All right. The CDC just changed their COVID guidance to everything Florida was doing right from the start. Next time, CD, next time CDC, just ask Governor DeSantis how to handle things and save yourself two years of looking stupid. This is something I think we'll be talking about later on, how uh, this is a CDC spicer. guidelines have changed. While yeah, we can get into it right now. Like I said, let's let the yeah. tweets of the week drive the conversation. This is from Laverne Spicer, so I know this is one of the topics you want to talk about. Yes. So... To all the follow the science Fauci praying Fauciites, um, you need to go find all your conspiracy theory friends and give them a hug and tell them you were right, I was wrong. So a few of the new COVID-19 guidance from the CDC. Now, YouTube, go fuck yourself. I have no problem telling you that. I am reading from the new guidelines from the CDC. We have not been spreading misinformation, okay? Those exposed to the virus are no longer required to quarantine, something we've kind of figured out a while ago that just because you walked past someone or were in a room with COVID-19 does not mean you automatically have COVID-19 and you need to shut down your life for the next week. Yeah, right. It doesn't. It, it, in real reality, it does not. Yeah. yeah that's right. And, you know, it. Uh, we'll go through these and I'll, I'll say my mm-hmm. point. Unvaccinated people now have the same guidance as vaccinated people. I thought this was a pandemic of the unvaccinated. Yeah. Though, right. And well, it's pretty much the pandemic of the vaccinated because all you see is triple, double boosted. You know, so and so just came down with COVID and then they say the line. Make sure you say the line, <laughs> guys. I'm thankful. Uh, the, Pfizer, the CEO of Pfizer just tested positive for COVID. He's double vaxxed, double boosted. And he spread disinformation by saying that the Pfizer vaccine will 100 percent, 100 percent prevent you from getting COVID. Yeah. In all seriousness, they did give like the biggest sheep that bought into this the most false sense of security. It wasn't just him. The president of the United States, Mm -hmm. Rachel Maddow, the CDC director, they all said that, Um, you know, Jill Biden just tested positive for COVID after she had put out a statement which recited the line. You know, yep. I'm thankful for the the uh, protection the vaccine continues to provide, which is just a loony bin statement, right? Because yeah. it's not you've gotten COVID and you're sick. Um, I, I think something to note of again, we're not doctors, right? So I don't really understand this stuff 100. percent But something that's in, been interesting to see with Biden himself and some others and Fauci this happened to is uh, the rebound infection, mm-hmm. and it seems to be people who have gotten multiple boosters, like Fauci and Biden, both got four. Um, you get COVID. You know, you get over it and then five to six days later, you get COVID again. And that seems to be happening at a higher clip in people who have been multiple jabbed. So that's interesting, right? As opposed to other people who I guess haven't been multiple jabbed or perhaps not jabbed at all. I'm fine. Haven't had COVID in now over a year. Right. So no, no, not only no rebound infections, but no COVID for me as well. But Fauci, and, who's gotten every shot you could possibly get, has gotten COVID multiple times. And, and he back follows back. all his guidelines. Yeah. So wink, I mean, wink. Yeah, you know, I mean, give us back that episode that you kicked yeah. off YouTube yeah. you know, back at the beginning of the pandemic when we started and, to question how stupid all the, the restrictions were. And, you know, it, it this all came about when Joe Biden had COVID for like 10 days on top of it when he just wouldn't test negative. Um, another one is students can stay in class after being exposed to the virus finally we can let the kids stay in school and it's no longer recommended to screen those without symptoms holy shit what a mind bender that one is finally if you are not showing any symptoms we don't need to test you this whole you know i had a problem from the start with you know this asymptomatic nonsense i'll call it nonsense sorry youtube if that goes against community standards but if you don't have a cough and you don't have a runny nose and you don't have a b and c probably not sick you know my my throat isn't sore today so i probably don't have strep throat you know what i mean right you're not gonna go (laughs) take a strep throat exactly but but all of a sudden you know you could be asymptomatic that that was such a strange thing to me i mean before 2020 who tested for asymptomatic symptoms? What 
what sickness was in the air or, or around that was affecting people asymptomatically. This all of a sudden came upon the pandemic. Yeah, it was just weird, right? Like it was in a sense treating completely healthy people as if you were sick. Mm -hmm. Then if you, you know, my, my first go around with COVID was uh, asymptomatic. I just had a positive test. Nothing happened to me whatsoever. I, you know, like, I guess I was sick, but I wasn't actually sick. But like you were treated as if you were sick yeah. because you a test came up positive. I mean, that's just like bizarre in a sense, just in general, yep. you know, in general. It, and has been throughout all of human history and sickness history. When you're not <laughs> actually sick, yeah, you're not actually sick. And that's been the common denominator throughout you know, 600,000 years or whatever that humans have been around on this, yep. on this planet. So, I, yeah, that was weird. Yeah. I wasn't feeling well earlier this week and my, my job made me go get a COVID test. And I said, it's not COVID. And they said, how do you know? I was like, because not everything's COVID. I, you know, and I got the test and it came back negative and they were like, and still they were like, Oh, wow. You, you knew you didn't have COVID. I said, yeah. Because you could still have a fucking sore throat and not, you know what I mean? Like Those things still it, exist and they always yes, have, they yeah. always will. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I think it's worth noting here while we're talking about this, right? That uh, Rochelle Walensky, uh, you know, she has come out now, I think yesterday or today and said that the, you know, the response to the pandemic, the CDC kind of botched the whole thing. So she's now admitted this herself. Yep. The only problem is her answer to this is, Expand my powers, give the CD more CDC more funding, expand the organization. And this goes points back to what we've said on the show 10,000 times. They create the problem, and then they sell themselves as the solution to the problem they created. Mm -hmm. It's exactly what she's doing. Every step along the way they took, every action made everything worse, not only in terms of the pandemic, but also now look at the economy, look and at people's society, right? People's mental health states, uh, the gap in children's education. All of those things are factored in. It's not even like that easily quantifiable. Like yeah. we'll never really know for certain the damage, all those like those recommendations and restrictions of, and things the CDC know, did. Yeah, but think, they definitely think of hurt children. Think of the children who draw, you know, pictures of their family members with masks on because yeah. they know no different psychological you know I mean? damage. It's just yeah. not normal human behavior. I mean, no. how can you really quantify that? You know, that's not going to show up on a statistic somewhere, but it's there. It's real. So. We'll see and, as we get older, right? And the years go. Yeah. And to circle back to the tweet, it's strange how, well, it's not strange because we know why they're demonizing him, but we don't even need to talk about Ron DeSantis. We could talk about the governor of Tennessee. Our boy, Alex Abernathy was telling us how uh, they had the same similar uh, restrictions as Florida and Florida was demonized from the start of them pushing back on this narrative and now all of a sudden, the CDC itself, their guidelines fall in line with Florida. What did what right. if, if if we're following the science here and the CDC was following the science, where was Ron DeSantis getting his information from to make these decisions? The you bad, know what I mean? The bad scientists. You know? <laughs> I, I think the point Alex Abernathy made was a brilliant one. It was like the demonization of Ron DeSantis shows how in of itself everything was political to begin with mm -hmm. and he was making the argument that our governor in tennessee did the same thing that ron DeSantis did even a little bit better than ron DeSantis. and earlier however he doesn't really have any presidential aspirations is not on the national stage to the extent that ron DeSantis is so no one went after him right right i mean if the point really is what ron DeSantis was doing was wrong and bad for people wouldn't you have gone after the governor of Tennessee too? Cause he did it even, he took it a step further or, or Christy Nome, same thing. I think North Dakota, right? No, they really didn't. Yeah. It shows you in and of itself, how a lot of the response and reaction was really just political targeting. The establishment is afraid of these people who are going to run like Ron DeSantis. Of course. So, all right, let's move on to our next tweet. I think this kind of will play into what we're talking about at the moment. This one was new. This just came out. I just, I just got this right. I added it right before we started. I can't believe this. This is, this is a wild one. Let's uh, zoom in here for a minute. And this is from our good buddy, Eric Swalwell. And he goes, Democrats won't force government mandated pregnancies on high school girls. Hashtag pass it on. What? The pure unmitigated goal that you could make a statement like this 
I've tweeted, this is now, I guess, two hours ago. I go, no, just government mandated medical injections under the threat of losing your livelihood or worse, your pregnancy. And I posted a link to a new study that came out. Saying, I saw this again. I'm not a doctor. I haven't looked that much into this. This is from the thousands and thousands of you know, documents that have come out. 44% of pregnancies lost during the Pfizer COVID vaccine trial. Uh, company report turned over under the Freedom of Information Act, essentially saying that 44% of people who were pregnant in the trial had a miscarriage. So I can't believe Eric Swalwell would make a comment like this. Like, they're just ignoring the fact that they tried to mandate the Democratic Party, right? Yeah. Tried to mandate through federal legislation on every single person in the country, to one extent or another, getting the vaccine. But then he's going to come over here and talk about Democrats won't force government mandated pregnancies <laughs> on high school girls as if like as if the the individual this goes back to the abortion debate, of course. Right. It's just it shows their hypocrisy as if there was no decision or individual responsibility, whatever, in getting pregnant by by the, the female or the guy who did the in pregnancy. No, it's it's just a magical thing that happened. <laughs> And the government's not mandating that you don't, you know, that you can't ab abort it. I, it's it, the government's not going to mandate you get nutted in. Right. Exactly. <laughs> I just I don't. So the counter. Are, so is there a section of Congress that wants to force government mandated pregnancies? I guess so. I mean, like, I guess that's what so he's like, alluding to. Right. He's that's, alluding that's what I don't understand, because like I never. In, uh, mandate well, and pregnancies are not two things that go in the same right. sentence like, they're trying to spin they're trying to spin you know anti-abortion legislation that republicans are passing as mandating pregnancy that is like I, as if ron DeSantis is yeah. going around blowing loads in people and then he's forcing them to come you know go to term with I, the baby that's what they're spinning it as I mean, good luck. Know, good luck if that's the strategy. You're, yeah. You're, you know, you're you're taking it to the midterms. I really I really good luck. with it. <laughs> You know, this is kind of like that. Uh, that equation we came up with for on Zach's show, like there's no I don't think there's anyone out there like in support of like mandating pregnancies. First off, I don't even know how you would like like if you don't get knocked up we're firing you you know uh so go into your boss's office and get on the casting couch yeah. <laughs> the whole thing is is based in not logical yeah and I, I don't think anyone thinks that because abortion well roe v wade being overturned i don't think that anyone's like oh my god they're gonna force us to get pregnant now it's gonna be mandated yeah uh, honestly what it is you know and i'm thinking about a little bit more it's just more pushing the like no personal responsibility. It's the yeah. state. Eric Swalwell is is a member of the government. Wow. He's pushing a lack of personal responsibility and individualism, you know, towards people. That's what he's pushing. It's essentially the get out of jail free card, which is abortion. No personal responsibility. It's not your fault if you got pregnant. It's not the men's fault. It's not the woman's fault. And, you know, it's the Republicans fault because they're mandating that you carry the baby to term. It's really their fault. It's not your fault whatsoever. It's just it, culturally, it's such a shitty thing uh you know like moral or standard to be enforcing um and it's coming from the government right like i said he's a government actor so there you Bad go. faith actor yeah are you getting anything on my your side because the delay yeah, on my side is huge i hear you you're frozen but you know we'll, we'll, we'll power through whatever here. um let's go Fucking on internet yeah that's the zone of low technology over there in the uh, in the captain's quarters oh boy you got a chank tweet oh no and everything's gone now I'll read it for you. Cenk Uger. Unger. I always forget how to say his name. Oh, um, yep. Can you hear me? I hear you. Yep. You hear me? All right. Yeah. Okay. There's Sorry. That's all right. All right. Uh, so this guy is a threat to society <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. I never seen anyone with this type of thought process in my life. It's, it's truly, truly bizarre. I'll never get over the fact that Republicans think the one politician in the country who definitely isn't lying is Donald Trump. And my counter argument is you are the entire left believes all of Congress, except for Trump, is telling the truth. For the most part, yeah. 
Yeah. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say every single person. There's still some a, agreed. A handful agreed. of good of good, you know, people on the left, like Jimmy Dore and Glenn Greenwald, etc. But yeah, right. I mean agreed. Uh, but prim- I know what you're saying. Primarily <laughs> the people that are on Chank's side are NPCs yes. being given commands and following orders as being told of what to believe. Yeah. Every every organization across the board is telling you not to believe this one guy and continue the New York Times, the, the Washington Post. How many times have they had to retract statements that were false? How many times has the view had to apologize and just for getting things blatantly wrong to run with an agenda? But somehow Trump's like the liar in all this. Impeachment one, impeachment two, Russia hoax, this, that, knickknack, paddywhack, investigate him, investigate him, comes out clean every single time, and he's the liar. So, I, I, yeah, I see your point, right? I'm not going to say Donald Trump is not a liar. He is. I he's lied about a lot with of things. You. I, I think the point here, just, you know, for, for, you know, to play devil's advocate, I guess, is Chank is trying to tell Trump supporters or Republicans that he can't believe they think he's the only one that's not lying. You know, like that Trump supporters think Donald right. Trump is not lying whatsoever. And he's the only politician not lying. So to some extent, Chank here is saying that all politicians are lying, which is true, yeah. which is true. true. Obviously, I will push back here, however, though, and say we run in a lot of circles. that have a lot of Trump supporters and they are, you know, I mean, are there people who are so dedicated? They think yes. that Trump never tells a, a fib ever like Honest Abe or something like that? Yes. But for the most part, I have never fucking run into somebody like that. You know, they're they're still somewhat grounded in reality where they but, know, hey, yeah, the president lies about shit. So you, know, you got to understand, um, Chenk, you know, his favorite Republican is somebody like Liz Cheney. Correct. So, you know. Yeah, correct. All right. So let's go on to our next one. All right. This is going to be a dive now. The next one we're going to go. This is going to set up a uh, an expose here of mine. This is a tweet. Oh, boy. Um, yeah, here Let me we put go. my mic away and let yeah. Skaggs go ballistic. Yep. I'm not going to go that ballistic, but this is a tweet from Tom Morello. For those of you who may, may not know who Tom Morello is, he is a guitarist for Rage Against the Machine, one of my favorite bands of all time. And Tom Morello goes, and there's a photo here as well. He goes, yesterday I went into the cantina at the new Star Wars land at Disneyland, and the bartender leans over, sneakily gives me this, and whispers, It's not often we get a resistance general in here. Thank you for your service. I almost cried. She handed him a Rebel Legion sticker to Tom Morello. I guess the implication here is that the bartender knew it was Tom Morello, right? If you're not really familiar with Tom Morello, he's always been an outspoken activist and advocate of certain political leanings and things like that. Primarily, he's been enraged have primarily always been like an anti-war group. You know, their whole, I mean, the name of the band is literally Rage Against the Machine, as you're familiar with, Cap, right? They have that great song, Killing in the Name of, where it's like, yep. fuck you, I won't do what you're telling me. I don't know if you remember years ago, us out on a boat on, uh, on Lake George, and I was playing that on someone else's boat. Fuck you, I don't, you know, I won't do what you're telling <laughs> me. Yeah. Right, so, yes. look, just to set the stage here, because we're going to go into this in a little bit more in depth, Rage Against the Machine, their identity is built on being against the state, the machine, everything that me and you are against, Mm -hmm. right? And that's why I've always loved them and resonated with their music. It's a very combative, fuck you, I won't do what you tell me uh, mindset. So the problem is, first of all, with this tweet, I mean, he's in Star Wars, in Disneyland. You know, this is a, a corporate place that he's in handing him corporate stuff. We like Star Wars, too. There's nothing wrong with Star Wars besides the fact that it sucks now. But he's pretending like he's a resistance general because some employee of the one of the biggest monolith corporations in the world handed him a sticker. Tom Morell is now a resistance general because <laughs> Mickey Mouse anointed Said him so, yeah. a, as such. But King where was, my, my point here is going to be, where was Rage Against the Machine the past two years, right? Well, the machine raged. Raging against it was not popular for some reason. So I have an article here from Reason.com. Reason is somewhat of a libertarian magazine. They're also trash for the most part, Reason magazine. But this was a decent article, so I'm going to read from it a little bit. 
And it says, after two years of silent COVID compliance, rage against the machine returns. This was on August 4th, so a couple of days ago. After two years of pandemic protocols, precautions, and prohibitions, Rage Against the Machine finally took the stage in Washington, D.C. Ha, ha, ha. Isn't it a little bit mm. fucking coincidental that their first show was also in Washington, D.C.? For a long-anticipated, much-delayed reunion tour to shout, fuck you, I won't do what you tell me. At back-to-back -back concerts in a packed Capital One arena, Rock's most, Rock's most radical band reinforced just how endearing its musical appeal is while adding a layer of awkward irony to the ideological project that runs through its lyrics. Filling up to a 20,000 person arena in a city where COVID fears still have people wearing masks outside is no mean feat, particularly when the cheapest tickets cost just under $200. That's very, very punk rock. They yeah. charge the cheapest seat $200. It's doubly impressive for a band that hasn't released a full length album, full length album of original material this century. That's also a testament to how good Rage has been, right? They haven't even made any new music, but they're still that popular. They really are. Their music is timeless in a sense. Yeah. Rage's Tuesday night show provided ample evidence for why people turned out. It was a tight, energetic performance. One might have expected a band of half its age. The lack of new material didn't matter much to an audience eager to rap along to well-worn classics like Take the Power Back, Know Your Enemy, and Testify. But if its music and performance have managed to stay fresh, Rage's message can't help but feel rather stale and ordinary. Given how politics has shaken out since its heyday, and particularly over the past couple of years, that its reunion tour has been delayed. The lyrical themes of Rage are a whirlwind of historical references and contemporary 1990s polemics, a merger of old school hippie paranoia about the security state, Hoover was a body remover, that's a quote from a song, with fresher attacks on the American-led post-Cold War order, NAFTA coming with the new disaster. Tying it all together is a rejection of the system, itself a racist, exploitative, and inherently oppressive some of those that work forces are the same that burn crosses. That's a famous quote from, uh, you know, killing in the name of. It's, it's broadsides against the FBI and U.S. foreign policy will easily resonate with libertarians. The attacks against consumer, consumerism and free trade won't. So there is a split there between libertarians and rage against the machine. Their rage is, you know, anti the state, anti the monolith, but they're still somewhat... Pro two hundred dollars for a seat. Well, pro, pro Marxism in a way. They're not for like free market capitalism no. the way most um, libertarians are. Viewed in the context of the decade in which the band was made, there was something refreshingly fun and nonpartisan about these attacks on a machine whose oppressive nature didn't change all that much from Ronald Reagan to Bill Clinton. But keeping this all fresh and distinctive has been a challenge. That's partly because one of the because many of Rage's once radical ideas have become basically mainstream. Attacking globalization was a little bit bolder in the 90s when Democrats and Republicans uh, largely supported it. Rage's gu guitarist Tom Morello's headlining of the 2016 Rock Against the TPP tour was less courageous when one side, when one considers that Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump both came out against the modest free tr trade agreement. I'd push back there and say that doesn't matter. Like he, I'd say that Tom was on the right side of that <laughs> argument. Most mm -hmm. people hated the TPP. So just because Hillary and Trump both were you know in i guess by a policy position doesn't necessarily make tom morello now not against the machine right but yeah. politicians like we were talking about before lie all the time and just take positions because they put their fucking finger up in the wind <laughs> see which way it goes they similarly, get that email in the morning yes exactly right they get the memo similarly the band provoked cheers when it flashed on abort the supreme court text message on a massive screen at two tuesday's dc show one likely could have gotten the same message by turning on MSNBC. The fading distinctiveness of Rage's brand of politics is less disappointing than the band's failure to apply its message of radical nonconformity to the issue of the past two years. COVID-19 pandemic has been a series of, of the machine telling people what to do, from staying inside and social distancing to wearing masks to getting vaccinated. Rage Against the mis Machine has been conspicuously silent about all of that. I'm I'd like stop. to push back on that a little bit because they weren't. <laughs> Good. What do you mean? Go for it. I remember uh, right when uh, bands started playing again, that Rage Against the Machines like only wanted to play in stadiums that like would only allow fully vaccinated people in. 
Correct. But I mean, what the article here is saying is that they were silent in opposition to the mandates oh. and which is well, yeah, ultimately... because they were in compliance. They they were good little boys complying with the machine. They, they should have a remix comply with the machine. Right, right. Which I'm going to. Yeah, which is going to be the main point mm -hmm. of my thing here. But the next paragraph and then I'll end it here. I'm not aware of any band members going so far as to endorse lockdowns or other pandemic measures. Um, Morello seemed to criticize mandates in 2020 when responding on Twitter to the hilarious rumor that the band would help President Joe Biden promote mask wearing and social distancing. <laughs> what are they talking about, right? Well, luckily they provide the link right here. This goes to uh, metalheadzone.com. Tom Morello reacts to a political speculation about Rage Against the Machine. A Twitter account shared a post allegedly stating that Rage Against the Machine made a deal with Joe Biden, the government, to promote their campaign, promote their campaign for people to wear masks and social distance outside. Here is what they said. Joe Biden's transition team has announced they have struck a deal with power group Rage Against the Machine to help get the word out to the youth of the country to begin to follow government mandates on wearing masks, social distancing. Well, some fans made fun of the fake news since Rage Against the Machine is not that kind of band. Um, some actually thought the news was real and wanted an explanation from the band members. Guitarist Tom Morello recently took to Twitter to respond to the rumors about his band and stated that the news about their collaboration with Joe Biden was actually fake. Morello also mentioned that he is completely fine with infecting COVID-19 to elderly citizens if they have if they are Trump supporters with a hashtag implying that it's only natural selection. So what here's what Tom Morello actually said. Fake news. Trust me, if you want to sneeze your COVID into MAGA grandpa's mouth, I 100 percent support your kick ass freedom to do so. Why I thought this was all important is because he's not being in opposition to anything. He's just saying, look, I'm agreeing essentially ideologically yeah. with the Democrats, right? Or the insane leftist, you know, shit lib NPC propaganda machine. propaganda machine of the day. And I'm taking a political position against Trump, the right wing, whatever the fuck you want to call it. And you could go sneeze. So it's even worse in my <laughs> opinion, right? Yeah. Not only was, did he never utter a word in opposition, Tom Morello to any COVID measure, but he wanted to weaponize COVID against his political enemies, right? Who are in opposition to COVID restrictions. That yep. is where Rage Against the Machine is today. That is where Tom Morello is today. They are rage on behalf of the machine. Quite literally, they will kill you. They, or he's advocating, you know, facetiously or whatever. He's advocating to kill you in yeah. behalf of the machine. Mind-boggling, dude. Mind-boggling and... It's so disappointing, dude. It really is so disappointing. It is disappointing. It is disappointing. But here's here's the thing. Rage Against the Machines has been around since early 90s. Late, yeah. Uh, a yeah. Further so, back than that. Yeah. They, they so, were biggest, uh, biggest in the 90s. Yeah. Okay. So biggest in the 90s. So before that, they didn't have a lot of money. Then from the 90s on, they had a lot of money. I'm sure some of the band members live in London and Beverly Hills and visit the Hamptons and, you know, the finer, the finer things in life. They don't really live that grungy punk rock lifestyle anymore. It's all, you know, day spas and foot rubs. So it's, it's not surprising to me that after two decades, three decades of luxurious, high class, elite style living, because they are basically an elite rock band, yes, uh, you I know, agree, in, the, yeah. in the world of rock and roll, I'd say they're pretty elite. Uh, they've lived a very cushioned, privileged life, and it's not shocking that 30 years later, they rage on behalf of the machines when they had no money, when they had no money and they were coming up. Fuck the machine. Now they got money. Eh, well, yeah, you know, sneeze into right. MAGA grandpa's, you know, mouth. Yeah, sneeze into my political enemy's mouth. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, it's just so weird. I'm not even done yet. I have a little bit more here to go into, oh. which I found while I was looking for into this, right? First of all, I did a personal search of Tom Morello's page and I did not find anything about it pushing back against the COVID restrictions, which is just insane. I also well, looked at I mean, rages. Twitter. He wouldn't. Is he? Is he a blue check mark? Yes, of course. Well, then, of course, he wouldn't push against, push back against the COVID regime. One of the biggest themes about Rage Against the Machine, as well, and where I agreed with them always the most, is they were always had a very anti-war stance, right? Forever, 
which is something that obviously I agree with tremendously, right? You know, the anti-war position. When I was looking for these tweets, I found a tweet, or I, it wasn't Tom Morello's tweet, but it is a tweet that he shared. Let me get to it in one second here. Hang on. Oops, sorry. So, found this tweet that Tom Morello shared. And it's by someone called John Mortar. I knew it was good. And it's about the war in Ukraine. And it's a, it says, a cover version of the clashes London calling to draw the world's attention to the struggle of the Ukrainian people and to raise money for the free <laughs> Ukraine. Sorry. For the free Ukraine resistant movement. Don't forget, Tom Morello shared this. It says, donate here. So I click it, right? Donate here. Where does donate here go? This goes to a website called freeukraine.tv. I go to the About Us. The Free Ukraine Resistance Movement is a citizen-led movement dedicated to protection and restoration of the territorial integrity of Ukraine, operating since 2014. For the first day of the aggression in 2022, we began deploying forces and means and, that, and at the same time engaged in active hostilities. An anti-war Rage Against the Machine activist shared a Donate Me page to an organization which is actively participating in war. That is where Rage Against the Machine is right now. I'm not saying what these guys are doing is not valid, right? That they're trying to fight for their independence or whatnot. But if you're an anti-war activist, how could you share it's a, a link to raise money to buy guys guns to participate in war? Like, could you ever could you ever envision Scott Horton sharing this link? Right. Yeah, and to here, go kill like go people buy in Yemen. guns and contribute to more war. That's where Tom yeah. Morello shared this. So even their anti-war stance is gone at this point or just it's, distorted or perverted yeah. in some sense. It's either die the hero or live long enough to see yourself become the villain. It's a sad story. There was a band called Rage Against the Machine and they raged against the machine. And after a while, the machine won. The machine won because it's not just the silence on covid it's not and now on top of it it's the support to arm people to free ukraine to participate a, in war you said it yeah. very nicely arming people to participate in yeah. war anti-war activists arming people with weapons to go participate in war and you know they conformed the machine won they it's not that they took a stance on different topics they fell in line with whatever the thing the is. thing was yeah yes. like none of these positions are brave in any sense of the imagination right. it's just what whatever the, you know people were putting in their facebook profile of the day is what rage against the machines was doing the machines won in that case the machine yes. and the state won yeah man so i mean it's disappointing i'm still gonna listen to killing in the name of and all my favorite songs of raging against the machine but this has changed my perspective definitely mm -hmm. on the band and uh its motives i it's... also something i didn't know tom morello went to um harvard and he graduated with a bachelor of political so science i did not know that until yeah. i started digging in here that's right? crazy so he's not a dumb person right, right. he has a, a bachelor's degree in political science he understands the political landscape so for you to understand a political landscape and to still be on the side of the machine while your name is rage against the machine, there might be more than it meets the eye or a little bit more nefariousness. Yeah. One, I, I would go with nefarious, but two, I also look at it from, I get it. The music industry is evil. I mean, Britney Spears was basically truly a slave. She was owned by the music industry. The, the Hollywood is a disgusting cesspool but i i still believe there's people there's celebrities and musicians out there and and athletes that are like fuck trump fuck maga this that go support ukraine listen to the government lockdowns and then on election day they're like yep donald trump you know if i but if i was an quietly, athlete like the closet maga yeah, people exactly if i if i was an athlete playing for the new york giants and we had the shitty record we have yeah if 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 adidas or fucking chinese nike is going to give me a, a 10 million dollar fucking deal sponsorship to wear nike because i said fuck trump i'd be out there every day tweeting <laughs> fuck trump and then on election day boop donald trump pay me my money bitch yeah I see what you mean. Yeah. But people like us are going to call them out. 
Let's oh yeah, of way. course it's our We're job too. Hypocrites. hypocrites, you know. Yeah. Uh, how, how much money do you need at the end of the day? Like you have no, if you have no principles. At, you know, what are you? Even? It's a, it's the it, privilege it, it, yeah, lifestyle. It, it is. It, they're they're not grungy rock stars anymore. They're I multi-millionaires who had the past. 30 years of their life catered to them. I get it. It just burns me because their yeah. whole marketing, you know, appeal <laughs> yeah. is against the machine. Yeah. And now they're the biggest proponents they of it. Played That's themselves. Why this burns me. They so, played themselves. They played themselves. They did. All right. So we got more tweets coming here. And we got a couple more topics. I see we're going on to one of yours. I see, oh boy, you got a Nina Turner status. All right. I this woman drives me, me fucking up the wall. And I've seen you go after her too. So before I read this, she actually has a new podcast coming out and she said, who should be our first guest tag them. And I put us. OK, because, <laughs> boy, if she's she's a pretty dumb individual. So I hope she's done oh, enough to have her on the show. I don't think she's done. I think her show is called Unbossed. Uh, uh, it's know. new. And to make matters even worse for you, guess where it's going to be on. Take where? a guess. The Young Turks Network. Oh, she's that makes charge of the sense. Young Turks. Cenk. That makes perfect so, sense. Yeah. She's been okay. under a lot of heat lately. Just side note, she's been under a lot of heat lately from the good leftists that remain like Jimmy Dore and Glenn Greenwald. Mm -hmm. And and just like, I mean, she's getting the shit ratioed out of her on a lot she's of psychopath. Yeah. But she's yeah. she's a god honest psychopath. Uh okay. Nina Turner. But I paid off my loans. Isn't a good enough reason to spend to send 45 million Americans into debt. Personal responsibility isn't a good enough reason to send 45 million Americans into debt. There needs to be their need. Sorry. They need to learn a lesson. Isn't a good enough reason to send 45 million Americans into debt. This woman has been getting destroyed on Twitter for her stance about eliminating student loans. And the, the one that really just enrages me is personal responsibility isn't a good enough what fuck and i actually tweeted this to her on one of her other tweets <laughs> what fucking planet did you come from personal responsibility is insanely important to the reason of this it is their responsibility to pay these student loans back i took a loan out recently i'm paying it back is it all of a sudden not my responsibility to pay that loan well, by Nina Turner's argument, yes, it's not your responsibility. Then maybe she's my new favorite person because I don't know if I want to keep paying this loan off. All right. So maybe, I, so I maybe guess you should I'm be not our tuner horn. Not yeah. saying how much she fucking, even how much she drives you up a wall. But dude, like I would never like. I understand this loan is my personal response to think, and you just said this earlier to you know we're we're just getting rid of personal responsibilities yeah. that nobody is accountable for anything. And as long as you toe the line, you know, yes. if, you, if you use a gun in New York, you're you're personally responsible. But if you don't want to pay your loans anymore, you're not responsible. Yeah. So, I mean, let me pick this apart a little bit here, too, right? Because I've been going back and forth with her. Well, not back and forth, right? She hasn't responded, but I've been going after her a couple of times. I've been getting a pretty good response. A lot of people are, going, are uh, I think, are a bit red pilled over this, this sort of brand of politics that Nina Turner is selling. It's worth mentioning. I used to really like her back when I was a Bernie bro, right? She made a lot of good points back then. Uh, she has fallen out of out of uh, favor with a lot of like the good people left on the because left. she her all her points are like she's like a little Bernie Sanders 2.0 Medicare for all the Green New Deal. The, yeah, the thing is, things have changed. Like, things have changed like in the past couple of years. And that, in my opinion, should have changed a lot of people's ideas and perspective on things but the people who haven't at all i look at now very skeptically so first of all she says but i paid off my loans isn't a good enough reason to send 45 million americans into debt i'd argue send them they already are in debt they took right. out a loan and they're in debt we're not sending them every, anywhere right like you took that loan you're in debt by us not paying the loan back from for you from you for you does not send you into debt it's not our yeah. fault you took the loan Again, obviously, personal responsibility. I'm not saying there's no problem with the student loan thing. There are 100 percent is and it's predatory to some extent. And the whole thing is predicated about uh, around, you know, selling people degrees that they don't really need. So I'm not saying there's not a problem with it. There is. Um, but I think what's lost here and, and what 
I don't understand. Well, it's, it's just a marriage, right? But what she doesn't tell people, and I think what most people are starting to realize is forgiving student loan debt doesn't mean we wave a wand and obligations are all forgiven. Yeah. It's not what it means. What it means is the United States federal government is going to have to print more money to then pay the debt for these people who are owed a debt. So who pays for that? The taxpayer pays for that, right? So you would be paying for someone else's debt. Yep. And I'd even further argue that person who has that debt, they're still, still. a taxpayer. <laughs> so yeah. They would then doubly pay for their own debt, right? Because they'd be paying for it through inflation because of the money printing with the Federal Reserve and through taxation and et cetera. So like the whole thing makes no sense. And then again, who is this debt owed to? Oh, yeah. The Harvard, where Tom Morello went, yeah. right? Am I? I have to now give a I have to pay Harvard, me, a, a regular middle class person or a person who is in debt, uh, in student loan debt, and has to pay Harvard again. Like Harvard needs a, a, a loan bailout from what? the taxpayers of America. They need an upfront infusion <laughs> of billions of dollars in cash. Let the them fucking you want to you want to really forgive student loan debt? Let the Send the military to the school and be like, forgive the fucking debts and you're going to yeah. pay for the debt yourself yep. or you're just going to have to write it off. That's not going to happen. Right. Obviously, this whole thing is a fucking scam. That's the only way the I would support it tab for them. These universities make so much money and their tuitions are only going up because these tuitions create this type of debt. Right. Right. So, you know, scam. the if 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 we really want to do it, then Harvard eats all of its students debt. That's it. They pay it and nobody else pays a dime for it. Just again, that's not what they're, I agree with you. Right? Yeah, that way, it's not what done. they're advocating I know, for. It's not. not. You, they have not saying that. And so, any stretch so of the imagination. Let me, they're, let me they're, ask they're, you this. Go ahead, go ahead. As a serious question, because you've you've been on this particular battlefield longer than I have. Um, <laughs> I like the way you put that. Yeah. So, all right. So just for a round number, let's say the 45 million Americans uh, that have the student debt are it it equals one billion dollars. So let's just round number, right? So let's say the government prints the one billion dollars and now taxes us for that one billion dollars. That happens on September first. Everybody has student loan forgiveness. The one billion's been printed. So now on October first, I go back to school and take out a student loan. Is is that loan forgiven or or do we start this process all over again? I don't know. Right. Because that hasn't been completely explained. Right. And I will also you are way underestimating how large the student loan tax I, is. I'm, I'm, is. Just I'm just I'm just a, a I'm round just number. I understand. Yeah. I understand. But if you if you told me it was one billion, the the effect on the taxpayer and, and inflation wouldn't Pennies. be that much. Yeah. It's one point seven trillion. <laughs> right. So that is if that was to be printed and then paid for through Federal Reserve or taxation or whatever, that's going to add a tremendous uh, you know rate increase to inflation and, and, our, and our problems. Yeah. Right. So it's a fucking scam. That's all it is. They're not proposing mm -hmm. anything real. And then again, right. It's not fixing the problem. People are going to just take out another loan. And be right back in the same thing again. Yep. Why? Because we haven't addressed personable personal accountability, yep. right? Which is but, what everyone is trying to say is a major theme in this whole thing. You have to address culture, right? That's not a big enough reason. Not to them, no, because they're nefarious. She's from actors. Uranus. Yeah, they're nefarious actors. They're trying to cultivate a generation of people who have no interest in personal accountability. They just see the government as the answer to everything. And the yep. government will just rule over and just dictate every aspect of your life. Yeah, I mean, I don't care. I doubt this goes against community guidelines, but truthfully, from my own fucking experience, college was and is the absolute biggest scam. Oh, my God. I was listening to. Oh, God, was it a podcast or did I find it on? I was listening to this conversation and they said in the 40s and 50s and maybe the 60s, you didn't need a college education, you know, uh, and and black communities, even though they were poor, this was before the crack ep epidemic, uh, black uh, communities were doing fine because you could go to grammar school, you could do a little bit of high school and then 
you could stroll right out and you get a job at a factory. And even though you weren't making a high wage, the cost of living was way cheaper. Uh, and this was across the board. It didn't matter about race. Uh, and you were just, you were able to get a job anywhere because we were producing things. We were building mm -hmm. things. We were making things. We were expanding as a country. Then all of a sudden, somewhere along the line, somebody came up with the idea, you need a college degree to be the boss now. So now, right away, disadvantage, if you don't have a college degree, you can't be the boss. You can only be the worker making the minimal salary. You got to go to college to get the big salary. And then every job became, you need a college degree, whether it's the, the little mailroom clerk or the CEO of the company. And it put the black community at a great disadvantage because at the time, a lot of people didn't have college educations and they couldn't afford college educations because they were only working in the factories. Then that grew. They saw, oh, boy, if we say every job needs a college degree, let's make college more expensive. So now you can't afford college. So now it's really an elitist privileged thing to do. But how are we going to make money off that? Oh, we'll we'll let the bank just give people tons of money that they'll that they'll pay back when they get this good job. And that lies the biggest fucking scam. They say take out 70 grand. 80 grand in a fucking loan. And when you get out of college, you're going to get an 80 grand, $80,000 a year job. And that is wild, wild bullshit. You get a $40,000 a year job and that's before taxes. And you can only pay off a small fraction of that loan. If you know, for the very elite few who got out of college and made 120 grand a year, yeah, you could pay it off in the eighties. Look at how much money we were making. You walk out of college, go right down wall street, 200 grand a year. You know what right. I mean? You were paying off your loans, but then things change. And it was, it, it, it's just this big I, even growing fucking scam. It's, it's, a, it's a scam. It, it really is. You know, I, the, the argument that Nina Turner here would, would make would be to just make college free for everyone, mm. which is, she does make that argument. Right. But that would also add to the problem as usual with every socialist or, you know, yeah. Democrat position they take. If you just make college free for everyone, that would saturate the market with college degrees. Right. Which we then further compound the problem. And I'm going to be real with you. College can be good. You can learn something. But for the most part, especially if we've learned past couple of years, you mostly don't learn shit. It's an indoctrination center where they are trying to push ideology onto you. Most of the professors, from my own personal experience, a lot of professors were Marxist. Some of them weren't even uh, like shy about it. I remember and I liked the guy. Right. I don't know if I've ever told the story before, but I took a uh, geography 101 class. And I thought it was going to be about like maps and shit. And it was about like the geography of people and where they were. And I mean, the professor was a nice guy. Interesting. Uh, we had a lot of great conversations, but he was a communist through and through. He even made a comment to me one day that like, uh, you know, we'll see if I can, you know, uh, turn you into like a, a comrade, you know, in the next couple <laughs> months or something like that. So obviously he's he's mentioning like, you know, communist lingo yep. there and whatnot. You know, now that I look back at it, I didn't know at the time, this was in like 2018, he was pushing critical race theory. He was pushing all this Marxist stuff that I wasn't really aware that he was doing. But we were just having an open and honest conversation and looking at history. Now, with a little a couple more years of experience and like looking into stuff, I recognize what he was pushing on me was a lot of these things that we've talked about here on the show. Yeah. Just at the time, it wasn't popular. It wasn't like highlighted mainstream like mainstream or, or anything like that. So. Yeah. But I mean, like, uh, did you learn any like did that even teach anybody something that teach you a skill that teach you yeah. how to build a table? No, Dude, you know who's going to pay for that that college degree? The guy who does build a table, the carpenter, yeah. right, who yeah. came out of high school and took a trade and he's got a pretty good life for himself. Now he's got to pay more taxes to pay for you who took I, the social, you know, the liberal studies <laughs> arts degree. I wish I did it because I, I went to school yeah. for four and a half years to basically party my ass off because Dude, yeah, everything that's a problem too because Not everything serious. oh yeah and don't get it twisted that you know you go to arizona you and you could go open up we could go open up a bar get a bar license in arizona why because you distract the children then they mm -hmm. gotta stay another year another loan comes out and go and thank god those kids don't have much personal responsibility right because if they get yeah. knocked up in this promiscuous lifestyle that is propagated on college campuses, they could just get an abortion. Yeah. Right. They're not for they're not government government mandated to have the baby. <laughs> All this shit is intertwined yeah. to some extent. Oh, right? there's there's no yeah. coincidences. It's the 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 rabbit hole, the deep state, the swamp runs deep and wide, deep and wide. 
I'm my current career has nothing to do with what I went to college for. Nothing. <laughs> yeah, me either. Nothing. I, I mean, if anything, like I bet I you most just, people would say that. Like, yeah. Yes. And if you look at like who the people who are making money, yeah, I didn't go to college and I just started working for a union. Yeah. Making yeah, triple that's not a bad path. I recommend yeah. that to you know, if there's any young people listening, I'm not saying don't go to college. I think that's also a mistake. We're now like a lot of conservatives are like, don't send your kids to college. I think you should take an educated look at your kids situation yeah. and make the best recommendation to them. But I do think it is. A, yeah. If you're, if, if your kid is, you know, the math honors collegiate champion of the tri-state area and has straight A's across the board. Yeah. I don't think that kid should become a plumber by any right. means necessary. And it doesn't mean sell your kid short mm. either. If they're dumb, no. right. That you should be like, sorry, kid, you're only going to turn out to uh, plunge toilets for the rest of your life. You know what I mean? Sometimes people respond to a challenge. But, but you know what? Though? I don't think dismissing plunging like, toilets for two hundred grand a year compared to working in the office for thirty grand a year is right. a huge fucking difference. Yeah, I, I, there's there is an honor and there is a use for those jobs, right? And they can be high paying. Like the trades are very high paying jobs. And yeah. if you're going to get into a trade, my advice would be if you if you're going to get into a trade, you should do it while you're young because yeah. you could be like a journeyman in a trade in like five years and you could be making pretty good money. Um, you know, if you're in one of the unions in one of the areas. But even if you're not couple years of experience as like a carpenter or an electrician you are a high commodity person right you yep. can charge a lot for your and services. you learn how to do things yeah. good life skills that every person should should have to some extent so i have to assume your your last tweet is about liz cheney correct so i have a tweet that i didn't post okay. about liz cheney which was probably one of the better tweets that i've seen through this whole thing All right. so do you want to go first or should i read it out uh, you can go first. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. It's from this idiot on uh, Twitter called at Skaggs 89. Oh boy. It's funny. <laughs> All right, go ahead. Yeah. This was actually a really good tweet to like, if you just stopped and thought about it for a second, there's all the Liz Cheney memes and her getting, you know, rhinos being helicoptered away and all the funny shit. Imagine going back to 2004 and telling somebody conservatives would be cheering on the end of of Cheney political dynasty and liberals would be upset upset about it that is it is insane how much yeah. has actually changed how how the political landscape has been flipped and destroyed and contorted so many different ways that that the war hawk of the Cheney dynasty Go to Iran, go to Iraq, start this 20 year seven, war. Right. The seven wars, right. That they have yeah. planned in, yeah. in the Middle East, just war, 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 drone children, kill people. Didn't matter. The liberals would be upset over right. the dynasty ending. It's 18 years later. Mind blowing. Right. You know, mind blowing. The, the reason why I chose 2004 as the year is because that is the year that we, you know, we're, we're <laughs> deeply embroiled in the war in Iraq. Uh, that Dick Cheney was basically the, you know, him and Weapons Bill Crystal, another fucking pathetic, right? They were the chief architects of, uh, you know, Liz Cheney has told that exact same line as her father. And at the time it was the left who were rightfully so outraged over the war in Iraq uh, and were completely against it. And the Cheneys, but now the Cheneys are their darlings. Yep. So that was the whole now. Right? Now Liz really Cheney how things is, could change. Yep. Liz Cheney before. is the ideal Republican for Democrats. This is what the GOP should right. be about. Yes. War and, and big business. Yes. The, the standard Democrat talking point. So let's go to my last uh, status. And this is funny because this is also from a guy called Skaggs 89. The last two. <laughs> and this is again about Liz Cheney. This is, you know, I'm, I guess I'm tooting my horn a little bit here, but I kind of wanted just to lead where we're going to go with the Liz Cheney discussion. And I said, you know, no matter which way you want to chop this up, the final numbers on the Wyoming primary tell us one thing complete repudiation of the establishment regime and what it stands for. And if you look at the actual numbers, what's all been said and done, uh, you know, Harriet Hageman, who won here and beat Liz Cheney in her primary, won 66.3% of the vote compared to 28.9% of the vote. That's that's a blowout. That's not just a win. Destroyed. And I got into, obviously the memes were hysterical, right? I knew this yes. was, I knew this was coming. I knew for certain. I mean, unless, you know, this is actually going to be a good litmus test for me, too, to see if elections are rigged or not, because I knew for certain that without a doubt she was going to lose because she's just so unpopular. Mm -hmm. But 
there's a lot more to this than I think meets the eye. The left right now is making the point of, oh, it's because the Trump people are so against Liz Cheney because she voted, uh, you know, for his impeachment twice uh, is, is, is leading the January 6th uh, commission. You know, one of the people in January 6th commission thing. She's always been very anti-Trump. So Trump obviously ran an endorsed candidate against her, an endorsed candidate one. It's all about Trump. That's it. That's why everyone is is, uh, you know, hates Liz Cheney. No, it's not. Right. It's not the only is that a major part of it? Without a doubt. It is. But yes. everything that me and you were just talking about before is also part of it, right? The Cheneys have advocated. Shit policy. The Cheneys, their family is directly responsible for the deaths of half a million people, human beings, right? That is a problem. And people, as flawed as some of the MAGA crew can be, a lot of them understand that and they're against war now. Yeah. So that is a part of it, right? Libertarians are extremely against Liz Cheney and her whole brand of politics, right? She's pro-war. She's pro-military industrial complex. The reason why she voted against Trump, and if you remember, the first impeachment was about the Ukraine's weapon deal, yeah. right? So, like, she didn't vote against Trump because necessarily she didn't like Trump in that one. She voted because Trump was holding up a weapons deal, which directly links towards, like, more war. Yeah. So, like, that's how pro-war they are. They'll vote against their own party, if their party, their president, their you know that's in their party holds up a war or holds up weapons distribution, that's the most popular or ideological point that the the Cheneys have always driven home. You know, Halliburton, their company, rebuilt Iraq. You know, it was invested there after the war. That's what these people are about. They're fucking blood soaked monsters, right? So for leftists now and people to dismiss this as oh, it's just a cult of personality. It's a Trump thing. I'll take it, even if it is yeah. right. A bad person lost and they're out. Yeah, they're going to she's going to get a job somewhere, I'm sure. In fucking oh, the VA will probably or, take her or, or Raytheon, right? One of these yeah. military industrial complex, which she has been laundering money for for a long time. But a bad person is out. I don't give a shit how it got there, who the people who voted out, what they were thinking, what their ideology was, or what their political leanings are. Bad person lost. New person coming in. I don't know much about Harriet. Hagen, Neither do I. Right. Maybe she won't be good. Maybe she will. I don't know. But she ain't got the blood of a half a million people on her fucking hands. Yep. Right. So she's without a doubt better than Liz Cheney. That's my the way I look at it. Yeah. Um, you know, we the way I look at it is I'm, you know, I'm against the deep state, no matter what side you're on. Rhino left. Don't matter. If Trump ended up being deep state, I'd sell him right down the river to it. Don't really matter to me. I want an end to this corruption. What I love about this is it is putting every rhino and for context, rhino stands for Republican in name only. It's an established rhino. It's an established Republican, uh, you know, just establishment. The, Republican, yeah. yeah, just whoever, you know, the, the Republican Party and the Democratic Party are two different wings of the same bird. The World Economic Forum and the establishment, the deep state, whatever you want to call them has their hooks in both parties. They play both sides of the fence, so they always come out on top. Liz Cheney is one of those established Republicans that needed to go. And as a conservative, I'm happy to see that as a political party, whether you call us the MAGA movement or not, America first, I, right? Yeah, whatever. whatever. I, and I will, I, you know, I, I'll call myself an American first because I think that's, you know, for now, that's where we need to be focusing on America first. Um, I'm proud to see that like a political party is working hard to eliminate these establishment figures that aren't doing what they are elected for. You know, what I mean, she's right, that's, she's right. That's the promise of the, the whole shebang, yeah. isn't it? Right. It At is. the end of the day, it is. And now it could all blow up in our face and we have no idea what ha uh, what's her name Hagerman Hagman yeah something like that Har is is going to do she might just be as dumb as a rock for all we know and you know what though maybe she'll get voted out then but this right. is the message that we need to send and i wish the left could wake up to this i'm not trying to see the death of a political party and end up with, you know how bad things would be if like 
the Democratic Party does die and all that's left is the MAGA movement, it'd be complete chaos. You know what I'm saying? Like there needs to be, I'm not saying there needs to be a two party situation because obviously that's not working, but I wish the left would wake up and stop fighting the right and start working on getting better candidates for their party. I think but, I think what you're alluding to in some sense is like the further you push people, eventually an authoritarian rule is going to come. Like yeah. if you push enough yeah. bad shit on people. I've seen. I don't know if you're familiar with Jesse Kelly. Uh, he's a he's actually a, a gay conservative uh, political commentator. He's pretty famous. Uh, last week after the FBI raid on Trump's home, he's like, "I'm done." He's like, "I want a fucking monster now in charge, <laughs> like an authoritarian yeah. monster." You like, want yeah, you want revenge. Right. I'm a libertarian. I'm an anarchist, right? Do I want a liber- do I want an, uh, a, a, an authoritarian in charge? No, obviously yeah. not, right? That's what we're trying to prevent here every fucking day on this show. But like by by you supporting this, by you supporting authoritarians, essentially, right? Like people, a political dynasty that's been in there for a long yep. time, you know, and other political dynasties. I think it's I think it's a, it's a it's a notch on Trump's belt. He has ended a bunch of insane political yeah. dynasties. Cheney's, the Clintons. Uh, you know, and the even bushes. the bushes, right? So, you know, does that mean that Trump is a great person? No, it doesn't. But he's taken taken down a couple other bad people yeah. along the way. Good. Let these evil people take each other down. And when the dust settles, hopefully common sense, sane people. Will, it's will yeah, we, you know, we need to work on just getting better people in there. That's I mean, that's the ultimate goal, because yeah. these because people you, I think, like Liz Cheney, are only going to push piss poor policies, you know, all the problems going on in the world. And, you know, I'm sure inflation is hurting Wyoming, but she don't care about that. Right. She cares about the January 6th committee. Right. That's another aspect of it, too. Right. You know, Wyoming yeah. voters are like, hey, you're not paying any attention to any of our local issues. You're out there persecuting Trump. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, hey, aren't you even in theory? Right. Like you're supposed to be a politician for that area. Instead, you're involved in political theatrics that are on the national scale. Yeah. So yes, like you've you've shunned the area you live in. Now you lost your job. Yeah. But and and this does a ton of great things. You can't you can't fake support. This empowers Trump more. This empowers the MAGA first, the American first movement. This this puts all the rhinos on on notice, and it also shows that there is going to be a course correction coming, oh, and yeah, the harder so. The harder the left fights back, I think they're toast, dude. I, yeah. I really think they're toast. Oh, uh, I was, yeah. I've been talking to people about, you know, with just the everybody wants to talk about the FBI raid, and we didn't want to talk about this week, and I'm really not going to, but like, there's no, there's no outcome that doesn't empower the MAGA crowd at this point. There's, there's nothing, even if Trump is found guilty. I don't I don't think it's going to hurt the movement at all, even if Trump can't I, run. I don't think people I think they've lost all accountability. Right. So people won't yeah. believe it any, anything anymore. Yeah. Like after so many failed attempts. Honestly, I don't think I'd believe it at this point. Right? Yeah. Like if they if they came out and said, you know, hey, look, we found this in the raid. Did you plant it, though? Like yeah. I, you've, you've got no trust with me anymore. And when and, and when when you ever did. Just, but yeah, when you and, and then also when you literally just compare like. Okay, so Hillary Clinton got off for this and Trump's not going to get off for this. Why did Hillary get off? You you know what I mean? When she destroyed all those emails. If Trump was acid washing hard drives, they'd they'd have them strung up already. Yeah, it's 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 political, obviously, without getting into that whole thing again, man. I you know, I know you said kind of before it's like, oh, you know, it wouldn't be good if you know it's all just the MAGA crowd, but I look forward to a future where there is no Democrat Party anymore. (laughs) Leftism has completely been eradicated. And all that is remaining is a new sort of brand of pol- politics. And yeah, maybe it's conservatives yeah. and libertarians. I was just going to say it's yeah. going to be a mixture of the the left, which is going to be Republicans and conservatives and the new right, which is going to be libertarians, anarchists, free market and caps, yeah. et cetera. And within this new group, we'll be able to have actual rational conversation yeah. where perhaps we'll we'll make some sort of compromise as to. All right. You want there to be a state. Let's make it the smallest state that could possibly yeah. exist, like the founding fathers had, right? And you guys could have your flags and you know your your you know your sentimentality about everything, but basically have no power in a sense. So that would be ideal. I, I'd yeah. be fine with that. Yeah. 
Well, I think I honestly, the way things are going, I think we're going to see the death of the, the Democratic Party. I really I really do. I think I think I was telling somebody today, November is going to be fun. It's going to be wild to see what happens. But with that, with the fact that a red wave is coming, it's going to get dark before it gets light. Yeah, it's I, 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 I can't I can't fathom what the deep state has cooking up to drop. Oh, yeah, I agree. So you I, know I don't what think I mean? it's the death of anything. Yeah. I think they'll they're they're moving, you know, towards uh, desperation mode and then they have the institutional power behind yeah. them, right? Because at the end of the day, where does power really reside? In the barrel of a 45, something <laughs> like that, right? That's where power resides. Yeah. So it doesn't matter. They'll, you know, right now they're the protect our sacred democracy and democracy is sacred, right? It's our God given right to democracy. But as soon as that shit starts not working out for them, believe me, they're going to turn on democracy real quick. <laughs> They'll throw saw, democracy in the wind real quick. You saw Brooklyn dad today, right? Who's been the biggest defender of democracy the past yeah. couple of days. Be like, this is insane. We can't continue to go down this path with what happened to Liz Cheney. And I tweeted at that. I'm like, oh, wait, so now you're not for democracy, yeah. right? Because you didn't win. Your your, your person didn't yep. win. So it's really not about democracy. It's about power. And democracy is the word they use because it sounds pretty and sounds fair, right? But it's just a, it's just a, a word, right, that's masquerading as I rule everyone and we call it democracy. That's what they <laughs> yeah. really. Yep. So. Yeah, man, that's uh, I think it's a good place to end it. I think really so. did enjoy the memes uh, around Liz Cheney. I mean, yeah. I, I got to hand it to a couple pages on Twitter. I want to shout them out. Uh, great page called The Right to Bear Memes. It's a hysterical meme making page. Uh, they do a great job. The Left Can't Meme, also another great meme making page. These guys are fucking brilliant. I wish. A lot of the shit they make is like, God damn it. I wish I would have thought of that. Yeah. It's so funny. And they make it with such speed. Such speed, dude. They're like, yeah. bam, like that. And that is a big part of a culture war. Yeah. Um, people say like, oh, what are you going to win, uh, you know, this cultural civil war by, you know, making funny pictures and sharing them to each other. And then there was a meme of that. And it's like mm. the, the founding fathers printed pamphlets and handed them out at bars to each other <laughs> to get people to fight on their side. Yeah. Memes. The founding yeah. fathers were sharing memes or a form of memes back in the day. So perhaps memes will, have, you know, when you look back at the history books, it's memes you know, will be, have been very important. Yeah. Don't I landscape for I don't think anybody who listens to our show would, but don't sleep on the power of memes. Literally. White House, FBI, Department of Homeland Security, they view memes, they view memes yes. and they have think tanks and, and try to figure out how to come how to combat memes and they can't they haven't been able to for what six seven years now this is almost a decade old battle that they've been losing since 2015 and the best the best they could come up with is shit like maga king right Ultra you know what MAGA. i mean like it's 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 crazy to think that like the memers took that and ran with it and made it yeah. hysterical. So yeah. like that's because they don't know who they're dealing with. They don't actually genuinely research who their enemy enemy, quote unquote, is, you know, uh, they, they just they just think it's idiots making funny pages. But it's it's, it's there's information people, in them. Without a doubt. There yeah. Is, yeah, there is information as as dumb as a meme might look. Yeah, I guarantee you there's a pretty smart person on the other it's, end of it who knows exactly what kind of yeah. message. They're trying it, to convey with a simple, funny photograph. Of yeah, truthfully, what started me in, I guess, the beginning of the Q days or whatever you want to call it and stuff, when memes really started taking off and getting political was I would see a meme and then I'd go research the topic and right. then I go learn about the topic. Yes. Oh, boy, that's something, you know, They're the establishment provoking. don't want you fucking doing. Correct. They are thought provoking instruments, right? Yeah. That are That's the goal to spark a thought in your mind. That thought gets you to start like looking into things and perhaps changes culture or the political landscape. And future. now we have a podcast. There you go. All right. <laughs> Wrap it up, buddy. We're going to take a break next yes, week sir. and then we'll be back with some uh, some fun stuff. And we'll be uh, back with uh, House of the Dragon, uh, the yes. Dune review, uh, probably Sunday night, Monday morning. If you watch that show, check it out. We'll see how it goes. Yeah. All right, so Doom Nation, thank you guys for tuning in. I hope you guys enjoyed another rendition of the Two Doom Men podcast. Check out some of our previous episodes. We had awesome guests on. We had Alex Abernathy. We had Deplorable Janet. We had Steve from Sergeant and Samurai on. Plenty of stuff to catch up on. We're going to start turning out Doomed Reviews again. 
We'll see you guys down in Tennessee. Hope you guys have another great week. Hopefully the world doesn't end before we get to Tennessee. So we can yeah. report on some more shit. I'd like to have a good time. Out yeah. There. Fun spot. Broadway. Yes. And as always, make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Adios, Doom Nation.